<laughs> you guys, you guys catching this? a new metric for complete boredom if you get excited to make footprints in the snow on this bridge for the first time because you're up early in the morning to film a vlog yeah you're bored <laughs> I don't know you guys let me know but at what age you have to start being mature you know cool Stop caring about these things, you know? Honestly, woke up this morning, looked out the window, saw the snow and was like, I gotta go vlog right now. I'm working on a video right now. I'm gonna be posting it today. It is uh, March the 23rd. It's gonna be about building your brand in esports. If you haven't checked it out, go for it. I'm working on posting it right now. And yeah. Honestly, just goes into the importance of building a brand, uh, just in general or even in gaming. I think it's so important and even something to kind of talk about a little bit, just getting recognized in esports. I think that's kind of a, a question in a lot of people's minds. If you're uh, wanting to become a pro or wanting to become a streamer at some point, just like, how do I get that recognition? To sum it up, pretty much so much easier nowadays than it was before. Like before, you know, it was either you knew somebody or you got recognized because you literally just popped off in a tournament or in a LAN event. Nowadays, it's a lot easier. You have a really like streamlined path to pro and uh, there's easier ways to actually go about making that breakthrough into the pro scene. Like there's strict tournaments you got to qualify for, tournaments you got to play in. And it's just, it's clear. You know exactly what you have to qualify for, what you have to play in, where you have to do well to, to make that breakthrough. Here's the thing. I think it has a lot to do with whatever game you're playing. You know, Call of Duty's path to pro is completely different than maybe League of Legends or Overwatch. And again, I wasn't too heavily involved in the COD scene, but I do know that you have to be, you know, you have to do really well in game battles. You have to get recognized through that way. And then when it comes to League of Legends, like there was Challenger series, like you had to, your team had to be high up on the ranking ladder for the 5v5. And uh, man, I remember that. That was actually really cool. But again, if you want my advice of how to get recognized, how to get that recognition in esports and how to really make that breakthrough into the pro scene, don't give yourself an excuse. Make videos on YouTube, constantly be posting on Instagram, Twitter, you know, every social media platform that you have your hands on, use it, utilize it, make the most out of it. Just really don't give yourself an excuse as to why nobody's looking at you or recognizing your play. If you want to, if you're just only comfortable throwing up highlights right now with no face cam, if you're just comfortable with just streaming your gameplay without a webcam on, then, then start off that way uh, and slowly work your way up. And something else, I mentioned it in one of my other videos, it was uh, tips for pursuing pro esports. I'll link it down below or it'll be in one of the cards, but maintain relationships. Do not burn your bridges. Keep those connections, maintain those connections. Keep in touch with people that you've played with in the past, people that you've met with on ladder that you're maybe dual queuing with, or uh, if you are on an amateur team, keep in touch with those people because you never know what might happen. Like some guy that you've been in touch with two years down the line ends up making a breakthrough into the pro scene and the team that he's on needs a replacement. Like your name's gonna get thrown out there. There's only so much you can control in the end, right? Because later on you may rec you may regret like, oh, I should have put myself out, out there or, oh man, I should have had more of a presence on social media like YouTube. Um, or Twitch, right? And again, if you have the time, like an hour and a half to two hours after you finish scrimming or after you're practicing, whatever, stream. If you're playing solo queue every single day, you should be streaming that. End of story. Like to me, unless you're like really dialed in and you wanna have your own individual practice and you're really working on your own gameplay, then fine, like don't stream that. But if you're playing solo queue for an hour and a half to two hours minimum each day, like turn on your stream. Why not? I, I don't I don't see a reason why you wouldn't do that. It's just gonna benefit you in the end. I think eventually I'm gonna start doing um, call-ins. I'm gonna I, I want you guys to let me know what you think about that. I'm I'm thinking about doing call-ins where people that you know are on the path to pro or in pursuit for pro esports um, or even just want to get better at whatever game you're playing. 
you know, you can call in and we'll live stream like a, like a, just a chat between you and me. Um, and I can kind of like give you some advice or you can ask me any questions. Um, and I strictly be speaking off my own experience, my own experience, making that breakthrough into the pro scene and also being in the pro scene for about maybe it was in the, yeah, for about two, three years. Hey, hit me up in the comments. If you guys have any questions about pursuing pro about getting recognized in esports, hit me up in the comments. If you guys like these vlog style type of videos and, uh, that's it. GG's in the chat. I'll see you in the next one.